When they first invented carbon dating, 1949, Willard Libby, they did some testing and they said, the lower leg of a mammoth was 15,000 years old, but the skin was 21,000. How can two parts of the same animal be different ages? Quite obviously, we know one of the numbers is wrong. So how would you know either of them are right? And if either one's right, how would you know which one? I see no way to tell. Well, let's see if it's getting better. 14 years later, they tested a living mollusk, a clam, and it was 2,300 years old, still alive. In 1970, at the Nobel Symposium, they said, if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it does not entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop it. You mean they can, they can pick and choose any numbers they want? Exactly correct. If the number doesn't fit what they expected, they throw the number out. 1971, freshly killed seal was 1,300 years old when they carbon dated it. Troubles with carbon dating are undeniably deep and serious. Despite 35 years of technological refinement and better understanding, the underlying assumptions have been strongly challenged and warnings are out that radiocarbon dating may soon find itself in a crisis situation. Continuing use of the method depends on a fix-it-as-we-go approach, allowing for contamination here, fractionation there, and calibration wherever possible. It should be no surprise then that fully half the dates are rejected. Did you follow that? Out of thousands of carbon dates that have been carbon dating times that they've done it, half of the numbers are thrown out. How do they know they're wrong? And also, how would you know the other half is right? If half your test results have to be thrown out, it ought to raise red flags in somebody's brain. Wait a minute. This is stupid. What are we doing? We're wasting our time here. And the article goes on to say, the wonder is, surely, that the remaining half have come to be accepted. No matter how useful it is, the radiocarbon method is still not capable of yield yielding accurate and reliable results. There are gross discrepancies, the chronology is uneven and relative, and the accepted dates are actually selected dates. This whole blessed thing is nothing but 13th century alchemy. And I agree. That's 1981. Now, I've got all these in chronological order. It never gets better. 1984, living snails carbon dated 27,000 years old. 1992. Two mammoths found side by side, they carbon date them, one is 22,000, the other is 16,000. Which one's right? Or are both of them wrong? Or are both of them right? There is no possible way to tell. In 1996, Carl Swisher at Berkeley University used the most advanced techniques to date human fossils. Says last spring he was reevaluating Homo erectus skulls found in Java in the 1930s. He was testing the sediment found with them. The species was supposed to be extinct for a quarter million years. Swisher used two different dating methods. He kept making the same startling find. The bones were 53,000 years at most and possibly no more than 27,000. Well, I'd like to point out two things here. He's looking for a quarter million as his answer, but he keeps getting 53 to 27,000, okay? Which is only one fourth of what he wants, one fifth of what he wants, okay? but he's still getting a 96% error. I mean, is it 27,000 or 53,000? This is not an exact science. So when they publish an article in the paper and say, we found a dinosaur bone or a mammoth bone, and it was, you know, 17,221 years old in six months and three days. Like, <laughs> right, come on. You don't know that. They're making up this stuff, just absolutely making it up. Professor Reiner Proch von Zeiten, uh, earlier the February 9th of 2005, was uh, resigned from a professor because he'd been lying about carbon dating for years. He, his, his frauds were exposed in February of 2005. He had dated the Bischoff spire skeleton at 21,300 years old, but when they tested him at Oxford, they showed it said it's only 3,300 years old. 700% error. He had said, Professor Proch had said he had found the oldest German, the first German to ever move to Germany, 27,400 years old. They tested it at Oxford and said, this is an old man that died in 1750. He's 250 years old. The professor had been lying about this stuff for decades, and so he finally resigned in disgrace. Well, he should, okay? Uh, one part of a mammoth dated 29,000 years old, another part was 44,000. You talk about a slow birth. That would be it, okay? I like this article from <laughs> Rand McNally. 
The last two years, an absolute date was obtained for the Gandong beds above the Trenal beds. That's in Indonesia. It has the interesting value of 300,000 years, plus or minus 300,000 years. Boy, they nailed that one right on the head, didn't they? Plus or minus, you know, 300% error. In the uh, Geological Survey Professional Paper 862, and I get some flack over this, but I've got the paper in the library somewhere. We couldn't find it here. They, there's all kinds of articles about carbon dating things in Alaska. I just want to show you a few things here. They carbon dated sample number uh, SI-454. See that on the map there, on the chart there? And said it was 17,210 years, plus or minus 500. Then they sent test, 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 tested sample SI-455 and said it's 24,140 years old. Well, 17,000, 24,000, say, wow, that's working good, until you find out that's the same sample as 454. Very same sample. Test it again. So is it 17,000 or 24,000? Sample number uh, 299 was less than 20,000 years old. That little carrot means less than. Sample number L137X is greater than 28,000. We say, well, see, it's working good. This sample is less than 20,000. This other sample is greater than 28 until you find out it's the same sample as 299. How can a sample be less than 20 and greater than 28 at the same time? I taught algebra for a long time. I don't think that's, I don't think you can do such a thing. That's not, not too good. Living penguins were dated at 8,000 years old. Um, materials from layers where dinosaur bones were found are carbon dated 34,000 years old. I was in a debate one time and this professor was getting so upset. Finally, he said, how can you use Reader's Digest as a, as a resource? I said, sir, I use Reader's Digest as a resource for the picture of the dinosaur bone, okay? <laughs> it's not the resource for the fact, okay? It's the, that's where I got the picture from. Oh, okay, okay. So we went on to the debate. But yes, dinosaurs ought to date, you know, 70 million years old. A Russian scientist dated dinosaur bones at less than 30,000 years old. Hugh Miller from Columbus, Ohio took in four dinosaur bone samples and said, would you carbon date these? And they charged like 600 bucks to carbon date something. They carbon dated them and said they're less than 20,000 years old. He said, oh, by the way, these are dinosaur bones. They said, oh, well, then they're not 20,000. We've got to test them again. Why can't they be 20,000? They said, well, we know dinosaurs lived 70 million years ago, so if you had told us that, we never would have carbon dated them. One friend of mine died here several years ago, but he was digging, doing a lot of archaeological work, and he dug down in this well and he found layers of burned wood, which is good to carbon date, because obviously, you know, it had carbon in it. And he put them in a baggie, sample number A, from such and such a layer. How many feet down? He labeled it A. Dug down 10 more feet, hit another layer of burned wood. A city had been destroyed, or 20 feet, whatever it was. He labeled it sample B. He took them in to have them carbon dated, paid them the 600 bucks, they said, sample A is, I forget, 3,000 years old, and this one's 4,000 years old. He waited six months, <clears throat> switched the labels, took them back in, same laboratory, said, I want you to carbon date these samples. Now, sample B, the lower one, is in the uh, top bag. So just switch the labels, and they give them the same results, 3,000 and 4,000. It doesn't work. It's never worked. Here's things to consider about carbon dating. When the sample of you date a sample of known age, it doesn't work. If you date a sample of unknown age, it is assumed to work. That's not science, okay? As things decay, they produce helium. This helium, the amount of helium in the atmosphere, is only enough to account for a few thousand or a few million years, not billions of years. There's a book called The Mythology of Modern Dating Methods by ICR, if you want to read stuff on that. They do a lot of testing on this. They're probably the experts in the creation community. This guy said, the rocks do date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. That's ludicrous, okay? And it all based on circular reasoning. They've known that for centuries. We'll cover more on that on video four. I talked to uh, uh, James P. Dawson. He's going to be on our radio program tonight, actually, Jonathan. He's supposed to call in. Uh, J James Dawson was one of the guys working on dating the moon rocks. They brought back moon rocks, gave them to his laboratory, and said, how old is the moon rock? He took specimen number 10017, divided it into six pieces, and tested it many, many times. How old is it? They got numbers ranging from 2.5 billion to 4.6 billion. That's a 500% error. Or 100% error. I talked to him back in 99, uh, and he's in Oklahoma. There's his phone number. 
He was Chief of Engineering and Operations for the Lunar and Earth Science Division of the Manned Spacecraft Center in NASA in Houston. He worked on lunar samples, including the Genesis rock. He told me they found ages from 10,000 years to several billion in the same rock. His website, jpdawson.com. How can one rock be 10,000 years old and several billion years old at the same time? Something is wrong, okay? The book Bones of Contention has a great chapter uh, at the end called The Dating Game, showing how that they will just change the dates whenever necessary. Uh, if it doesn't fit the theory, oh, let's test it again until it fits the theory. See, the theory is important. The facts are not. Evolution, as I've said many times, is a carefully protected state religion. And that's all it is.